art and pain. Last night, my body decided it needed to have a migraine. Unfortunately for me, it was at night, making sleeping and recovering that much harder. Normally, my migraines occur during the day, but if they happen at night, they're the toughest for me, as in last night. When my migraine happens, I start to see lights in front and center, interfering with my vision and blinding me. And this seems to confuse me until I realize what's going on. Then I stop whatever I'm doing, and I hurry to organize myself. Almost, I feel panicked to do that, but I calm down and I follow my migraine plan that will bring me to lie down and have everything at the ready so that I can focus, relax, on healing. And I might do that with including an audio story or something that brings me to a happier and calmer place and with lots of water. So we're gonna go jump into what happens next. The next day, or I should say today, my head is fuzzy and it's sometimes hard to think. I take it real gentle as I feel the pressure from the migraine still. I use art to help me through this to recovery. I go to my studio. I change my chair for something that seems encouraging my posture to something straighter. Sometimes I think my posture might be the cause of this. And a while ago, I made myself a kneeling chair that I can move around and helps me to mm, keep my neck, neck and my shoulders flexible. I also double check to make sure my desk is at a good and supportive height for me. And together, hopefully that works well. Sometimes looking for the cause of why a migraine happens is a long and drawn out process because it's not a daily occurring thing. So you don't always know what causes it. So sometimes it's like hunting and not knowing where you're going. But for sure, for me in my studio, I make sure the posture is important. I also, during this time, give myself a little extra comfort by gently stretching and moving my neck with sensitivity to my neck joints and making sure there's flexibility there. So there's post migraine can feel like stiffness. So keep that flexible. I bring my art supplies, my favorite art supplies within hands distant and I choose for an easy relaxing project. As I said, the next day I have foggy brain and I'm not necessarily thinking clearly. So to play with art today, to do art therapy, I focus to make sure that I'm kind to myself and I'm tolerant and I have playful or easy supplies to use. Nothing that's overly challenging. This is their time for recovery. One of the reasons I do art is to heal myself. Another reason is to process to my forebrain what is going on in my body. Sometimes I want to have it easy and do an abstract thing where there's no rules and lighthearted. It's easy, loving art. And if I do abstract, I might even want to simulate the lights that I've witnessed during my migraine. I try to in, be inspired by my experience, like using the prodromal line, the, the prodromal lights and such, because they would make a pretty background or painting, really. I'm trying to come to terms with what pain looks like, and I'm trying to make friends with it. Where I'm going with this is that I'm doing a hundred faces project, but as I was progressing through it, the migraine hit. I thought, what an interesting opportunity. My main goal in the 100 Faces project is to hone the skills of different facial expressions. I thought it would be interesting to explore pain as an, as an expression, and I thought of this doing this because it feels so fresh. Art can help with all kinds of pain, emotional and physical. If you think art therapy might be something that you would like to try, I recommend trying working with it. Art has helped me through many points in my life so far. School, relationships, conflicts, 
all sorts of things. There are many kinds of pain and you can find official therapists and counsel groups you can work with. But of course, you can also do it as a self-study, which is what I do often. Anyway, I digress. I decided that I would use a simple process of graphite to express what my pain looks like today. With the pencil strokes giving extra energy to the pain, once, once the base drawing is put down, I use the deep dark lines of the pencil of a 2B, or you could go darker, and to express those feelings and characteristics of the pain in the face. It felt like a release to use these strokes and to illustrate what pain feels like, and in doing so, releasing the pain, and that's a good thing. It's also kind of a forgiving thing. Here's something that's really important, and I really want to remind you is that I like to drink lots of water during this time. I have a lidded water bottle in my studio and I'm not, because since I'm not thinking clearly post migraine, I always put a drinking vessel and a separate cleaning vessel in. It's important to keep this habit. It's, whether I'm painting or not, good studio habits are important and you don't want to go drinking your cleaning water. It's full of toxins. Keep your water clean, for drinking. During the time of pain and discomfort, I think of Frida Kahlo when she created paintings that were of her suffering and her life. If she can do it, so can I. The important thing to be thinking about in this kind of art is not to judge it, but to let it flow and give pain a direction to follow. Meaning, let it go if you can and move it into another direction. F through this, you can learn more about your situation and how to find room to open yourself up to learning about how to effectively deal with it. Allow art to become one of your tools or your medicines. Art as medicine. Migraines I have found are very unique to each person and there are lots of ways to treat this from different medications to massage, chiropractics, naturopathics, yoga, biofeedback, acupuncture, art therapy, and so much more. And they can also work together as preventatively or after in recovery. Just to be open to what works for you. Because honestly, you probably don't know until you try. Migraines can be a huge mysteri mysterious thing and not everything works for everybody. You have to find your way. To communicate with others who are dealing with it in their way, they might have suggestions for you on what they learned, or that maybe you can help them. Maybe you can even start an art therapy group to make it happen better and easier for both of you, or all of you. There might be more than just one. Of course, seeing an MD might be a really good thing. I have found that going to a meeting with your practitioner, but prepared with well thought out questions in advance, they will help them best meet your needs. And though they might not be able to resolve your issues with pain, your questions might be able to help them to springboard to other potential answers. And of course, if they don't meet your needs, there's always lots of other, uh, other opinions out there. I think the best thing to remind yourself is that you're not going crazy, you're not faking it, what you're doing is real, what's going on is real, and there's something you can do. You just have to find your way. Surround yourself with compassionate, loving people. My final suggestions about pain include be kind, be gentle, be informed of why and how and what it is for you and then let your art help you to heal, to become more aware of how pain and the experience of pain is affecting you. Consider art as medicine in your medicine chest. So, I'll talk with you soon, and please let me know in the comments below if you have any suggestions or thoughts on how to help each other deal with this very common but painful problem, or 
if you use art as medicine. And if you like this video, let me know in the comments below and consider hitting the subscribe and bell icon to be informed when I post more. Thanks for watching.